Can I ask you the same questions? Right now, you're getting an all-access pass behind the scenes. Yetta is in here. Wow. With iconic radio DJs John Jay and Rich. From the early days. They were just watching us talk. To their hot topics. Have you guys ever shared anything from home, from your wives, and from your experiences that they've been very upset about? This dynamic duo has interviewed the biggest celebrities. I remember the Jonas Brothers, when they came to our studio, we didn't want to talk to them. And there's one they'd like to forget. Worst interview ever. Ooh. And the singing superstar who missed Rich's wedding. She went to the wrong wedding at the Palms. Are we, are we putting that out there? I saw her when I was walking out. Plus. If football never existed, I wouldn't care. That is so rude. Can you say about football? Holiday family fights, secrets to keeping the peace from a real life beauty queen who's also a hostage negotiator. And celebrities share what they are thankful for this holiday season. Welcome to this Arizona's Family Original with me, Yetta Gibson. Yeah, get it together, breathe. <laughs> get your life together. This, not a normal interview. Can I read your cards? Slapper. Can I ask you the same questions? You can. Okay. Yes, I'll hand them over to you. What makes you cry? <laughs> oh, that's a good one, actually. John Jay and Rich. Have we been on that long? I've been listening for 20 years. Oh, How yeah, long have we you been on? We, I don't know. No, we've been on for 23, 24, I think. But we're celebrating our fourth year of excellence. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely you know their names, and if you're in the car in the morning, you've definitely heard their voices. I get up in the morning, I'm so excited to come in, and I think when that goes away, then it's like, okay. But it doesn't. It, I see no sign of that going away. You can be a solo artist, you can be in a band. I've always liked being in bands. Same. It's, it just feels better, and like when the show, lifts off the ground, mm -hmm. like when, when everything's happening, it's just, it's just a, it's like a dopamine hit. Be great. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so <laughs> Before taking over the airwaves in cities across the country, Arizona native John J. Vaness and Rich Barra from Missouri had solo careers, but then joined forces in Tucson. The year? 2000. So I was doing a show in Houston, he was doing a show in, a tech, in, tech, in Dallas, and we met at a radio convention. I told people I was kind of like fishing for an idea for a, a radio partner, and John Jay's name kept coming up. Um, and we finally met, and we we're just sitting, talking on the couch in this lobby. And I noticed there was a bunch of morning radio guys standing around us, but they were just watching us talk. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so I called up John Jay and said, hey, I'm really looking to put together a show. Um, would you be interested? And of course, he wasn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sent out a tape everywhere. And we got, we got offers in Chicago and Seattle, um, DC. But the guy running Tucson was like, you guys come here. I'll let you do whatever you want. Shout yeah. out to Mark Medina. Yeah. And that's how the John Jay and Rich show came to be before hitting the airwaves in Tucson. And the rest, as they say, is history. You can hear them now on 104.7 KISS FM in Phoenix. And their show also airs in more than 20 other cities across the nation and is part of the massive iHeartMedia radio network. And these guys are really invested in the content you hear. Or something happens over the weekend and I can't wait to get on Monday to talk about it. Like if we go on vacation, we're kind of miserable. Because mm. it's like, I don't oh like God. I don't like it. <laughs> because it's, it's just so much content, you gotta get it out. Yeah, there's yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. stuff. Taking notes all the time. Yeah. And, and then I'm and now with you know cell phones, like I used to take notes on a piece of paper. Now yes. I take notes on the phone, right? Wow. But it also comes across as rude. I grab my phone and I'm like, stop texting. I'm not texting, I'm writing down this note. And you gotta you gotta remember things from yes. a certain point of view that yes. might work on the radio. Now. I got a behind the scenes peek at exactly how they create their weekday morning show, their day starting at zero dark thirty or around three AM. And it's fascinating to watch John Jay, Rich, Kyle, Peyton. First, they roughly go through what they'll discuss live, and that basically is the only prep. When the light comes on, the show just unfolds, unrehearsed, unscripted, and sometimes what happens on air even surprises them. And nothing is off limits. Have you guys ever shared anything from home, from your wives, and from your experiences that they've been very upset about? I oh, have, yeah. yeah. I yes. 
and how did that go for you? Not good. No. Yeah. Not but good. It's, it's worth it. Did because, you stop or did you keep doing it? No, you got to keep going. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, by the time she hears about it, it's already happened. This is a lot of work, guys. I mean, you said it's fun and I know it is, but if I'm sitting here hearing this right, there's a lot of thinking and mechanics behind what you do, although it is very authentic. Fine. Well, there's the entertainment side of it, too. It's like, you know, you could you could have a story that, or, or something that happened at home, but is it something that's going to touch somebody or is it something that's going to entertain somebody and really at the heart of it is like what 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 is entertaining what is relatable what 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 sticks to your guts what's gonna make you come back or even better what's gonna make you feel like oh those those guys are my friends it's cool a lot of that cool factor comes from John Jay and Rich's connections to a-listers and household names who got their starts right here in this studio you've interviewed everybody I feel like uh, Miley Cyrus made it on your show. That's yeah, just in my mind. lots of people did. Yeah. Katy Perry, yeah. Justin Brothers. Bieber. You got Justin Bieber with you? There he is. We were like their first interviews yeah. ever. I mean, I remember the Jonas Brothers when they came to our studio. We didn't want to talk to them. There they are in the Boys. studio. Jonas Brothers, and Hollywood they, Records, like trust me. Ah. So we brought them in, we, and they were so grateful because nobody would interview them. So we were the first yeah. ones. Oh, I've heard of them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, remember, Usher asked us to interview Justin, Justin Bieber. Bieber. He's like, I found this kid on YouTube. We're like, Dude, come on. Oh, okay, sure. here's the deal. Oh, wow. We're like, here's the deal. <laughs> we'll interview him. We're bringing him in the studio, but you better be on the phone right now with us is Justin Bieber. For years, they put on a concert series called Fusan. This is an area they created a name for between Phoenix and Tucson. And that concert series drew in big names like Selena Gomez, Enrique Iglesias, Paula Abdul, Rihanna. And some of these artists are now their longtime friends. Like, it seems like sports celebrities and actors really like John Jay. <laughs> and comedians and musicians seem to gravitate towards me. Okay. Paula's like, almost like a goofy cousin to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Paula, she flew in from LA with the intention of attending Rich's wedding, and she almost made it. She went to the wrong wedding at the Palms. Are we, are we putting yeah. that up? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's fine. And mm -hmm. then she showed up, was it too late at your wedding? I, right after the, she, she, she I saw her when I was walking out. Oh no. Was, the, the ceremony <laughs> happened, now it was time for the reception and she shows up and she looks at me, she's like, I was at the wrong wedding. So many cool connections, so many stories behind the thousands of interviews they've done here. Because you've interviewed so many people, do you have anybody that you want a dream interview? Is there somebody yeah. you've been waiting for for a long time? Worst interview ever. Ooh. Their answer, minutes away. Plus, the two women who square off with John G. and Rich every day are spilling secrets. Well, we've had a lot of ups and downs and roller coasters. What about fights? and revealing the secret sauce behind the show's success. It's just unreal, I think. I still don't think I have like a full grasp on it. And I look around and I'm like, what is my life? Plus, holiday family fights. We've got the secrets to keeping the peace from a real life beauty queen who's also a hostage negotiator. And big names reveal what they are thankful for this holiday season. When this Arizona's Family original with me, Yetta Gibson, returns. We are back behind the scenes with John Jay and Rich. People from all over listen to this dynamic team based out of Phoenix. Because you've interviewed so many people, do you have anybody that you want a dream interview? Is there oh, somebody yeah. you've been waiting for for a long time? I would love to interview Tom Cruise. I would die. Worst interview ever. Ooh. Ooh. Tom Clancy. <laughs> Why? That's so random. <laughs> well, it really was, was the worst interview ever. You know the author, the guy who writes, uh, like, you know, all those, uh, you know, like, Red phone, October and all that? He was, he was terrible. How so? <laughs> he gave us nothing. Now to their other halves, the ladies. It was fun being with you guys this morning, but I learned a lot. Kyle Unfug, a veteran, the mom, and the voice of reason on this show. Yeah. But I think that's actually one thing that sets our show apart is we really don't mind pulling back the curtain and being like, listen, we're totally distracted because a cow just walked in the room. You know what I mean? Like Peyton Whitmore is the youngest member of the team, the newest on the show. As a kid growing up listening to the show, I think the second John Jay called me and was like, hey, we have, an, we have a position for You're you. like, I know that voice. I was like, what is going on here? I'm the type of person where I don't really think before I talk most of the time. And so I get nervous for that kind of stuff because it's like, what am I going to say today? And who is going to be upset with me about it? 
The dynamic of this crew feels almost magical. They square off on different topics, not afraid at all to disagree. And off air, they are a strong support system, working together even through their own personal tough times. And sometimes you'll hear about it on the radio. Rich got married a couple days ago. Rich has discussed the journey from his divorce to remarriage. John Jay has shared with listeners the pain of losing his mom. We really are able to take the things that may go wrong in our life or in our day and kind of turn it into something that may be relatable yeah. to listeners. We've had a lot of ups and downs and roller coasters. What about fights? Uh, there's been, a, you know, a few behind the scenes, oh, yeah, I guess. Scenes. There's been some, you know, raised voices and whatnot. <laughs> Slamming hands I don't, on I don't the know table. if I can pick out an exact worst day that we've ever had. I know there was one day where John Jay said he was going to quit radio. Oh yeah, that was bad. For me, uh, my probably worst day was one of the days when I came back from maternity leave, just because I think my hormones were really not back right yet. And you know, like I had felt like I missed out on so much. And I felt like not part of the bond anymore, mm -hmm. but the great part about it was, you know, like we all talked about it and then we ended up, you know, like working through it. And then we were, I felt like we were stronger after that. Because you were coming back from maternity leave and most women say they're missing out on the kids. Mm -hmm. The fact that you missed, you felt like you were mm -hmm. missing out on the bond with those guys. Yeah. And the show mm -hmm. is interesting. That means that the bond is very strong. Yeah, yeah, I think it really is. Yeah. Transparency, apparently the secret sauce with this crew and the driving force behind the show's success. When did you realize that this was a big, big show. It's like, it's just unreal, I think. I still don't think I have like a full grasp on it. Like, I do these amazing things sometimes or I'm at a show and I look around and I'm like, what is my life, you know? <laughs> we have fun and we have a lot of fun and we get to do a lot of amazing things and meet a lot of really cool people. But it's hard, it's a hard job. It's hard to wake up in the morning and to be on. I hope we make it sound easy, but there is a lot of like mental gymnastics that goes into it. So it can be mentally exhausting sometimes. So what do you want people to know about the show that you think they don't realize? or don't appreciate. I think they don't realize how much sleep we don't get okay. because we're I'm thinking about the show. Yeah. Or, I get this a lot, must be nice, you're done at 10 a.m. If we're not here at 11, it doesn't mean we're not working. I mean, personally for me, if you call this job work, I work all day. Mm -hmm. All I do is show prep all day, and I love it. We're on the iHeartRadio app, so you can hear us all over the world. Yeah. We get like, we're huge we get like 300,000 downloads in Los Angeles. You know, really? we get, yeah, we get, I think almost three to four million downloads a month here. Do we feel national? Is that what you said? Yeah, you no, we like feel we feel actually quite local, um, and we don't we don't hide that. We just hope that everybody else comes along for the party. And speaking of parties, the holidays are here, and that means family is coming over. But it can also be a time for fighting as our loved ones push our buttons. So we're bringing in the expert, a real life hostage negotiator, to help us keep the peace. No, we're all, you know, diehard cheese fans, so there's there's no outsiders allowed. What's cheese again? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Kelsey and he lo he's a Swiftie. I am. I was a Swiftie before. Uh, and you're not now? Diehard. Got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. Who knew? Is that a holiday that movie? Happen? Harry Potter is my holiday movie. Yeah. Wow! Harry Potter, really? Yeah, Harry Potter. Okay. Tis the season for festive movies, shopping, great food, and of course, family fights as we gather for the holidays. So I'm joined here by my friends Dawson Gurley, Candace Knavel, Vanessa Ariza, and Joe Velarde. Love the shirt. You may recognize Candace as Miss Arizona 2023, but she's also a SWAT hostage negotiator with Tempe PD. Candace is also trained in crisis intervention. She knows how to handle people and has secrets to keeping the peace. Up first, let's talk about family. Okay, parents, we, we, we came up with a couple of uh, issues on the list. Parents telling you how to raise your kids. I think it's talking to them individually because that de-escalates it. Um, immediately by separating people. But I think what it comes down to is really listening to understand the other person. Uh, Vanessa, 
people have opinions about the choices that you've made in your life and they share it with the table. They do. What do you do? I am a very blunt person, so I That's shut it down. Okay, what does that mean? Just flatly, we're not talking about this. So you're just gonna shut down the whole table? Oh, absolutely. No Is it what? the right thing to do? I think there's, there's so many different ways you could go about it, right? You could shut it down, you could excuse yourself for a minute, take a step outside, you could change the subject. Yeah. Let's just say in-laws who are at your house, but they would prefer to be at their family's house and they let it be known at the table, what would you do? Shower them with love, whatever, and then show them the flipping door, okay? okay? How about that? Yeah. If it's not working out, yeah. go to where you'd rather be. Find a balance and, and where you can separate and don't be the person to put the family member in the middle. Okay, so it sounds like just being the bigger person is the thing, but what if you don't want to? <laughs> I'm with you, I couldn't do it. What about just setting rules at the beginning? It may be awkward at the moment, right? Yeah. But it's gonna be awkward anyway. But I think yeah, so you could make it not awkward you know how I like weddings they do like no photography no yeah. this no that yeah. just put out a cute little Pinterest looking sign yeah. and then it, everyone can read it for themselves yeah. and that's that. Does the food comes out it's not food that you want to eat <laughs> what do you do? Well I love all food I don't you know really you discriminate, discriminate <laughs> but uh, so that's never going to be a problem with you but if people come to your house and that's their issue and they tell you oh this stuff is just so awful what do you do? You tell them to leave? <laughs> My personal opinion, just, you know, go to a restaurant like Rosconi's. You can't there cause you a ruckus in a restaurant, at least it'll... Oh, you it'll, can. You can. <laughs> You've been called to I've those. seen it. You've seen some things. <laughs> There's been arguments in restaurants, yeah. so it happens. we got to bring up politics. I want everybody to... Because we're not going to talk about it. But I do want to know from you, what do you do when it comes up? So it's reminding people that you don't need to go there right instead of searching for the one thing that you know is going to be an argument search for things that maybe you have in common and if you've tried your best to like nip it in the bud and it still goes there how do you stop that because i've seen that happen and it's a hard one it's a hard fire to put out at that point it's best to just separate if you're not going to come to a like agreement on it do you physically just walk out yeah we hear about you know taylor swift and Travis. Oh, that's what gonna if, be the topic at every time. But I mean, <laughs> what people, what, if people started to fight about that somehow, what would you do? You just take a drink of whatever you have in your cup and you sit <laughs> enjoy back it. and enjoy and it. Laugh. If football never existed, I wouldn't care. I'm kind of the same way. Did you say about football? No, I wouldn't care. That is so rude. I literally can recall several incidents where people are mad that their team lost, like you're in a house divided, and it's just one of those things where you're like, you have to remind them and almost talk to them like your kids, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, why are we really here today? Do you realize what you're arguing about and how silly it is? And then they're like, oh man, like, that was kind of dumb. Daz, you're good at making people laugh. Like, how would you break up any type of situation when it starts to get awkward. It might be an appropriate time to bring out the old pigskin, America's pastime, oh, and throw it right. around in the backyard. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Yeah, take your anger out in the field. Especially uh, the guys. Like, yeah. it, oh, it's like squirrel. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go let's go throw the ball around. Yeah, is it good to have something on TV like a Christmas movie, like just or something? Maybe a maybe a really bad reality show so you can be distracted. No, football. Football. Oh, Did you know no. about football? And then she gets called. <laughs> yeah. Is that the moral of the story? There's always going to be something, yeah. and you just have to deal with it. At period. the end of the day, remember that your family and your friends, and and that you're there for to celebrate and to spend time together and be thankful for what you do have. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Good stuff. Big names and celebrities reveal what they're thankful for this holiday season when we come back. Holiday music sure puts us in the spirit of the season. And for a lot of us, this time of year is when we reflect on the past year and give thanks. That includes Derek Hall, the president and CEO of the Arizona Diamondbacks, who made it all the way to the World Series. What I'm most thankful for this Thanksgiving is all of our staff, our full-time, part-time game day staff that helped us get to the World Series. And believe me, every single one of them played a part, as well as all of our fans. I'm thankful to you for being patient, supportive, and having a great run with us. I was thinking about what this Thanksgiving season, what I was thankful for, and uh, first thing uh, is family, friends, our community, and uh, the opportunity together. We can make it better than yesterday, but not as good as tomorrow. And uh, I'm wishing you and all that stumble across this ship in a bottle a happy, healthy 
Thanksgiving with lots of peace and love. Hi, Yetta. I am so pleased that you are dedicating this show to gratitude because the things I learned about the power of gratitude when I was researching my book, Thank You, Power, truly knocked me over. I looked at the science behind the practice of gratitude, and it is unbelievably compelling. For instance, there was one study that found that when research subjects wrote down three to five things that they were grateful for every day and why they considered it a blessing, they were, among other things, healthier. They didn't get sick or catch as many colds. They were more active. They exercised an average of an hour and a half more per week than the other folks did. They got more on their to-do list done, and other people around them noticed that they were more pro-social. That means they did nice things for other people for no particular reason. Other studies have found that when you're in a state of gratitude, you are smarter. Feelings of gratitude excite your dopamine receptors which are located right here. This is the same part of your brain that controls decision-making and logic. And tests have found that people in a grateful mindset are better able to pull disparate bits of information together and come up with solutions. So if you want good things to happen in your life, maybe the thing to do is count your blessings. Hey, it's Kevin Frazier and Michelle Turner from Entertainment Tonight. What are you thankful for? Oh my gosh, so many things. Friends, family, loved ones, you. <laughs> you don't have to point. He has to prompt us for, to be thankful for him. No, but I am thankful for our friends, our families, our co-workers that are here that are like our family. And of course, being here with you. Ah, listen at you. Well, from our ET family to Arizona's family, Yetta. We hope you have a wonderful and happy holiday season. Oh, a lot of nice surprises, a lot of great messages, too. Thank you, guys. We wish you and your family a happy holiday season. Connect with me on Instagram. You're going to find more behind-the-scenes stuff with everybody you just saw. My handle is down below. Thank you so much for joining us for this Arizona's Family original. We'll see you again real soon. Get your life together. Chocolate and sports. Do you, do you like chocolate at all? Or you just I mean, no, no, no. I like chocolate, but I don't have to. And cake, I don't have to have it. I have to have mm -hmm. brownies and rice crispies. Are brownies chocolate? Yeah, no, I told him two times. I'm so late. You get killing me. I gotta go. I have to go. Can you handle this without me? No. I have to. Let me let me ask you. I have to be somewhere in ten minutes. Let me ask where are you going? Uh, I'll uh, to my doctor. Is your husband Let's go? go? I don't have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when comes so to dinner somebody? conversation, yeah. you want to you want to get awkward? <laughs> Got that online dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? You call it 911.